Psalm 73. No one can deny it. God is really good to Israel and to all those with pure hearts, but I nearly missed seeing it for myself. Here's my story. I came so close to missing the way. I was stumbling over what I saw with the wicked. For when I saw the boasters with such wealth and prosperity, I became jealous over their smug security, indulging in whatever they wanted, going where they wanted, doing what they wanted, and with no care in the world. No pain, no problems, they seemed to have it made. They lived as though life would never end. They didn't even try to hide their pride and opulence. Cruelty and violence is part of their lifestyle. Pampered and pompous, vice oozes from their souls. They overflow with vanity. They're such snobs looking down their noses, they even scoff at God. They are nothing but bullies threatening God's people. Loudmouths with no fear of God pretending to know it all. Windbags full of hot air impressing only themselves. Yet the people keep coming back to listen to more of their nonsense. They tell their cohorts, God will never know. See, he has no clue of what we're doing. These are the wicked ones I'm talking about. They never have to lift a finger, living a life of ease while their riches multiply. Have I been foolish to play by their rules and keep my life pure? Here I am suffering under your discipline day by day. I feel like I'm being punished all day long. If I have given in to my pain and spoken of what I was really feeling, it would have sounded like unfaithfulness to the next generation. When I tried to understand it all, I just couldn't. It was too puzzling, too much of a riddle to me. But then one day I was brought into the sanctuaries of God and in the light of glory, my distorted perspective vanished. Then I understood that the destiny of the wicked was near. They're the ones who are on the slippery path and God will suddenly let them slide off into destruction to be consumed with terrors forever. It will be an instant end to all their life of ease, a blink of the eye and they're swept away by sudden calamity. They're all nothing more than momentary monarchs soon to disappear like a dream when one awakes, when the rooster crows, Lord God, you'll despise their life of fantasies. When I saw all of this, what turmoil filled my heart, piercing my opinions with your truth. I was so stupid, I was senseless and ignorant, acting like a brute beast before you, Lord. Yet in spite of all this, you comfort me by your counsel. You draw me close to you. You lead me with your secret wisdom and following you brings me into your brightness and glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? You're all I want. No one on earth means as much to me as you. Lord, so many times I fail, I fall into disgrace. But when I trust in you, I have a strong and glorious presence protecting and anointing me. Forever, you're all I need. Those who abandon the worship of God will perish. The false and unfaithful will be silenced, never heard from again. But I'll keep coming closer and closer to you, Lord Yahweh, for your name is good to me. I'll keep telling the world of your awesome works, my faithful and glorious God. Psalm 74. Are you really going to leave us, God? Would you turn your back on us, rejecting your people? We are yours, your very own. Will your anger smolder against us forever? Don't forget that we are your beloved ones. Wrap us back into your heart again, for you chose us. You brought us out of your slavery and bondage. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said that wrong. You brought us out of our slavery <laughs> and bondage and made us your favored ones, your Zion people, your home on earth. Oh, did you just hear what he said? He said, 
You brought us out of our slavery and bondage and made us your favored ones, your Zion people, your home on earth. That's pretty good right there. Your home on earth. Turn, uh, verse 3, turn your steps toward this devastation. Come running to bring your restoring grace to these ruins, to what the enemy has done to devastate your holy place. They have come into the very midst of your dwelling place, roaring like beasts, setting up their banners to flaunt their conquest. Now everything is in shambles. They've totally destroyed it. Like a forest chopped down to the ground, there's nothing left. All of the beauty of the craftsmanship of the inner place has been ruined, smashed, broken, and shattered. They've burned it all to the ground. They've violated your sanctuary, the very dwelling place of your glory and your name. They boasted, let's completely crush them. Let's wipe out every trace of this God. Let's burn up every sacred place where they worship this God. We don't see any miraculous signs anymore. There's no longer a prophet among us. Who can tell us how long this devastation will continue? God, how much longer will you let this go on and allow these barbarians to blaspheme your name? Will you stand back and watch them get away with this forever? Why don't you do something? You have the power to break in. So why would you hide your great power from us? Don't hold back. Unleash your might and give them a final blow. You have always been and always will be my king. You are the mighty conqueror working wonders all over the world. It was you who split the sea in two by your glorious strength. You smashed the power of Tainan, the sea god. You crushed the might of Leviathan, the great dragon. Then you took the crumbs and fed them to the sharks. <laughs> With your glory, you opened up springs and fountains. Then you spoke, and the ever-flowing springs of Jordan dried up so we could cross over. You're, you own the day and the night, sunlight and starlight. Call you creator. <laughs> the four corners of the earth were formed by your hands, and every changing season owes its beauty to you. O oh, Jehovah, don't ever forget how these arrogant enemies like fools have mocked your name. Lord, aren't we your beloved dove that praises you? Yes. <laughs> Protect us from these wild beasts who want to harm us. Don't leave us as lambs among wolves. You can't abandon us after all we've been through. Remember your promises to us for darkness covers the land giving the violent ones a hiding place. Don't let these insults continue. Can't you see that we are your downtrodden and oppressed people? Make the poor and needy into a choir of praise to you. Don't ignore these ignorant words, this continual mocking. Rise up, God. It's time to defend yourself from all of this. Never forget what your adversaries are saying, for their rage and uproar rise continually against you. It's, it's time to stand up to them. Psalm chapter 75. God, our hearts spill over with praise to you. We overflow with thanks for your name is the near one. All we want to talk about is your wonderful works. And we hear your reply. When the time is ripe, I will arise and I will judge the world with perfect righteousness Though I have set the earth firmly on its pillars, I will shake it until it trot totters and everyone's hearts will tremble. <sighs> Pause in his presence. God warns the proud, stop your arrogant boasting. And he warns the wicked, don't think for a moment you can resist me. Why would you speak with such stubborn pride? Don't you dare raise your fist against me. This I know, the favor that comes, I'm sorry, the favor that brings promotion and power doesn't come from anywhere on earth. For no one exalts a person but God, the true judge of all. He alone determines where favor rests. He anoints one for greatness and brings another down to his knees. A foaming cup filled with judgment mixed with fury in, his, in the hands of the Lord Jehovah 
full to the brim and ready to run over. He filled it up for the wicked and they will drink it down to the very last drop. But I will proclaim the victory of the God of Jacob. My melodies of praise will make him known. My praises will break the powers of wickedness while the righteous will be promoted and become powerful. Psalm chapter 76. Awe-inspiring power. God is well known in the land of Judah. He is famous throughout Israel, making his home in Jerusalem, living here on Mount Zion. That's where he smashes every weapon of war that comes against him. That's where he uses the broken arrows as kindling for his mighty bonfire. Pause in his presence. <laughs> God, you are so resplendent and radiant. Your majesty shines from your everlasting mountain. Nothing could be compared to you in glory. Even the mightiest of men have been paralyzed by your presence. They're so, they were so stunned and lifeless. Not even the strongest one could lift a hand. When Jacob's God roared his rebuke, soldiers and their steeds all fell to the ground, stunned and lying still. No wonder you are greatly feared. You are the awe-inspiring God. For who could ever stand before your face when your fierce anger burns and live to tell about it? When, as the earth itself holds its breath in awe before you, judgment is decreed from heaven. You arise to punish evil and defend the gentle upon the earth. Pause in his presence. You have power to transform man's futile anger into praise. The fury of your enemies only causes your fame to increase. So you'd better keep every promise you've ever made to the awesome one, Jehovah God. Let all people bring their extravagant gifts to him alone. He is famous for breaking the spirit of the powers that be. And the kings of the earth will know him as the fearsome one. Chapter 77. I poured out my complaint to you, God. I lifted up my voice, shouting out for your help. When I was in deep distress in my day of trouble, I reached out for you with hands stretched out to heaven. Over and over, I kept looking for you, God, but your comfort and grace was nowhere to be found. As I thought of you, I moaned, God, where are you? I'm overwhelmed with despair as I wait for your help to arrive. Pause in his presence. I can't get a wink of sleep until you come and comfort me. Now I'm too burdened to even pray. My mind wandered thinking of days gone by, the years long since past. Then I remembered the worship songs I used to sing in the night seasons, and my heart began to fill again with thoughts of you. So my spirit went out once more in search of you. Would you really walk off and leave me forever, my Lord God? Won't you show me your kind favor delighting in me again? Has your well of sweet mercy dried up? Will your promises never come true? Have you somehow forgotten to show me love? Are you so angry that you've closed your heart of compassion toward me? Pause in his presence. Lord, what wounds me most is that it's somehow my fault that you've changed your heart toward me and I no longer see the years of the mighty one and your right hand of power. Yet I could never forget all your miracles, my God, as I remember all your wonders of old. I ponder all you've done, Lord, musing on all your miracles. It's here in your presence, in your sanctuary, where I learn more of your ways. For holiness is revealed in everything you do. Lord, you're the one and only, the great and glorious God. Your display of wonders, miracles, and power makes the nations acknowledge you. By your glory bursts, you've rescued us over and over. Just ask the sons of Jacob. 
or the sons of Joseph, and they will tell you. And all of us, your beloved ones, know that it's true. Pause in his presence. When the many waters of the Red Sea took one look at you, they were afraid and ran away to hide, trembling to its depths. Storm clouds filled with water high in the skies, cloud bursts and thunderclaps announced your approach. Lightning flashes lit up the landscape, rolling whirlwinds exploded with sonic booms of thunder, rumbling as the skies shouted out your story with light and sound and wind. Everything on earth shook and trembled as you drew near. Your steps formed a highway through the seas with footprints on a pathway no one ever knew was there. You led your people forward by your loving hand, blessed by the leadership of Moses and Aaron. That's all for today. Have a good night.